So funny, funny story. My daughter actually, uh, you know, I, of course she found out that I was dating Steven and she's like, I don't want to meet him for a year. I mean, she actually set, she set the tone. <laughs> to, to be able to have fun and to renew, come back to that, that dance, basically. I, I fell in love with, with you around the dance. Take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean, and this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. You know, everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So you created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we welcome Stephen and Helene. Thank you very much for being on our podcast today. No, oh, it's our pleasure. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Indeed. Good to be here. Before we get into your story, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? How old are you? What do you do for a living? And how long have you been together? Well, I'm 45 and I am a coach. I'm a, a life and executive and health coach. And I work with moms exclusively to improve their lives, especially ending that overwhelm cycle and helping them to be able to manage the load um, that life brings and have more grace and ease and joy and be a better parent, be a better example and be a better wife um, and be successful in every area of her life. And um, Stephen and I have been together for a year and a half, which is, I know, a short amount of time, but um, that, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, I'm Stephen and uh, I'm uh, transitioning right now out, out of a marriage and uh, into a, 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 a new life of uh, really exploring some of my, uh, my hobbies that I kind of left behind uh, and uh, two kids just out of the house. And uh, so I'm really focusing on what I always wanted to do in my uh, career, which is more writing uh, coming out of uh, producing and directing. Um, so I'm really in this really awesome place of uh, renewing uh, some of, some of my, life choices and my uh, inspirations that I've left behind. <laughs> Can you guys tell us the story of how you met? Uh, sure. Uh, why don't you, you want me to say? Yeah, sure. Uh, we met through a, a, a mutual uh, uh, dance movement class workshop that is going on around the world, which is pretty exciting, but it's more improv, it's not like an improvisational dance movement. Some call it ecstatic, uh, five rhythms and five rhythms. Five yeah, there's retreats all over the world. There's some people call it different things, but it was really cool to meet that way because it was a shared value that we had, uh, and a lot of energy and synergy going on. Yeah, like nonverbal. <laughs> you know, there's like yeah. no phones and no talking allowed, and it's several hours of music and then freeform movement. So it's a yeah. very unusual way actually to meet somebody. <laughs> There's, there's a lot no of talking allowed at all. None. Wow. Yeah. What yeah, attracted people... each of you to go to that class or that workshop? No talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I started a movement practice years ago. Um, I was actually bound to a wheelchair as a, as a child, ages seven to 10 for a number of reasons. And, um, movement has been a key for me in terms of losing my weight, getting my body back as a, as an adolescent. And then as I grew and got more and more interested in personal development, I started to understand that what I was doing with my body 
with yoga. I found yoga uh, in the 90s, and I've been a practitioner, a very serious practitioner uh, ever since then. And I have just gotten so much out of it for my life, um, my energy, my work, <laughs> and everything has transformed as I've gotten more in tune with my body and the embodiment of it, the full presencing through it. And I have to say that in the last seven years, and I'm, I'm much newer to dance than you are. Uh, I found dance and I thought, oh my gosh, there are other people mm -hmm. who like to do this. I thought that I only did this in my living room and no one was watching. <laughs> but there are people doing it with each other in community and building um, building resilience in their emotional bodies um, in, in this practice. I come to find out a lot of people were psychotherapists in these groups. And what I found and, and learned over the years was it was the fastest way for me to, 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 to work through some of my... Um, holding patterns, some of my energetic blocks. And I felt like I was moving my emotions much more efficiently and quickly when I was in movement around it. So energy in motion to me equals emotion. And I was able to navigate that space more efficiently for myself and my own work um, through dance. That's wonderful. How about you, Steve? Yeah, that is wonderful. I never knew all that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking. Um, so I got introduced to dance actually um, first, just recreationally is fun is uh, with my my family, you know, dancing around at Christmas and and uh, we love music and uh, we every chance we had you know family gatherings we'd have some like fun dance with the cousins and then it was like not until years later when I got interested in acting and I went to New York to train uh, as an actor and filmmaker and I started realizing um, I was basically told that I had to do dance so I was in New York City and it's just such a great education to be going to, from speech class to singing class to a dance class <laughs> uh, and I was doing musical theater so um, that but so it was really uh, the shift to this kind of improvisational dance was uh, probably when I came out to LA from New York, I was like, wow, I need something to do. I don't wanna to go to learn ballet, jazz. And so I wanna play so I can go do it all and keep movement going because I had also experienced this cathartic um, uh, uh, release and healing that comes uh, through movement. And um, so it was really like, like wonderful. It's why I picked acting um, to be to begin with because it was so healing, and I was doing so much healing and releasing and getting in touch with my emotions and uh, dealing with stress and channeling and reprocessing and a lot of uh, story and trauma from my kid childhood as a kid, and then um, it became like, wow, I kind of need this. And then my marriage kind of replaced it. I married a dancer uh, <laughs> and who we stopped dancing after the wedding. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. That's it's, it's like, wasn't what I anticipated um, because it was such a big part of my life. So this is again, back to me getting back into something that is so essential to m my healing coming out of a marriage. Uh, and um, uh, now re, re, reinvigorating, regenerating, if you will, and uh, revitalizing my own um, uh, energy and uh, through movement. And I just got to wrap up with, I, I can't believe, you know, my daughter sent me a book called Your Body Keeps the Score, which is like the Bible of like... <laughs> Of, of, so I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was so happy that she sent me that. And it was also kind of like, um, uh, it's just amazing that they, after all this research they did, that that movement and breath was like, and yoga was more effective than talk yeah. therapy and, and medication. Yeah. Absolutely. And he's a great dancer, by the way. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> He's a great dancer. <laughs> yeah, we actually uh, interviewed dance partner instructors that run their own dance studio. And they were talking about, you know, a lot of this, the same stuff you guys are talking about, but 
uh, we assign as one of our the homework assignments for our couples to go and take a dance class together. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah. yeah. Makes so much sense. <laughs> I love it. So, so what happens after you guys can finally talk to each other? Ah, uh, well, we leave the uh, the dance. I had a meeting actually, and he was he, he had an event that he actually invited me to. I was a little bit surprised that he came up and he said, "Hey, would you like to come to this party?" And I, I said, "No, I'm sorry, I can't." And um, and then he took my number and he uh, followed up with me, and we ended up meeting later in the day. Uh, which was which was lovely at a health food restaurant <laughs> and um there was so much synergy in our um shared values that uh we just kept the conversation going and uh and here we are were you in in a relationship at that time helene or were you no you weren't okay hmm. no i'd actually lost hope i was i was really losing hope and uh even my daughter said to me she's like it's not gonna happen mom you know like it's just not just, you know, just kind of forget about it. And so I was feeling um, kind of hopeless, I would say, you know, really like this is not, this may not, this may not ever happen for me. I may just end up being alone, which, which isn't an alignment with what I believe. I believe we need to be in a relationship in order to do our personal development work that the other person, um, you know, helps us to reflect back, you know, really where our work is and the, where those edges are. And uh, yeah, I was feeling really hopeless and I was single. What was it about the your partner that you fell in love with? So many things. Um, the biggest thing for me uh, is our shared values, as I mentioned earlier. It was so liberating and it creates so much space for adventure and fun and laughter and growth. Uh, having somebody in my life who values health, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy heart, healthy spirit. And we both work on those things independently of each other and we have a lot to bring back you know when we've done our work um to the relationship and it is it's really rich fertile ground for growth um and i mean there's a lot of things that attract me to you steven um but i would have to say that the overarching theme of what like the glue that sticks you know and the webbing um is really is really around that because there's just so there's so much shared interest, you know, our hiking and our, our juicing and, <laughs> and our conversations and, and the adventures we like to go on and the things we like to do and the food that we share. And uh, there's just, it's, it's extremely um, full. And uh, of course, I love the way he looks and the way he dances and the way he speaks to me, <laughs> the way he nurtures me and all these things. He's really thoughtful and his heart is so generous and kind mm. wow that's a that big is. response steve <laughs> yeah fortunately i'm a guy so i can just say one sentence and it's just got to be a good one so i would say that it's um the same thing then as it is now which is this uh that um love is a um a process and it's, it has to do it has to do with a uh an energy a flow of being in this you know flow state that can go can go up and down but you keep coming back to this uh uh common ground of uh of you know wanting to uh work it out and to stay in love so i noticed that about you that when things would like come up that were challenging it's like and i know this is kind of complicated and deep and but it's kind of it has to do with like that's that's really admirable to me and like something that i i can fall in love with because i kind of i trust it and i don't really trust like falling in love you know because <laughs> I feel like you fall and you crash, right? So <laughs> after the honeymoon is over. So I think knowing that you have this, you had this core uh, and that that keeps me, right? Uh, falling or pursuing when a lot of things might come up and be like, you know what? I don't, I don't need this. I'm a guy, you know, I can, I, <laughs> I don't need to, uh, I don't need to think this get this love thing to be so complicated. So yeah, to, to be able to have fun and to 
renew, come back to that, those, the, uh, why we met that dance, basically that I, I fell in love with, with you around the dance. Mm. Right. So what is it that you have both learned in your previous relationships that has taught you and that you bring with to this relationship? Mm. Well, a- a- everything. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, because we're, in, we're, we're both committed to learning, uh, that curiosity, uh, of wanting to, uh, get it right. And then it's like, oh gosh, it's not about being right. It's about being better. And it's not only about being better, it's about having more depth. And then it's, maybe it's, that's too much depth. Maybe it's about having more fun. <laughs> It's this constant dance coming from a, 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 a relationship breakdown, like, you know, where you're giving and giving and it's something we had in common, but to speak for myself, you're, you're, you're trying to fix it and you're giving or you're um, like, you're pulling the self-help books. Uh, it's pretty, you know, unusual. I guess for the guy to be doing that, but there's always usually like one person who's trying, <laughs> it's usually the women, I guess, but it, uh, yeah, in my case, I, I feel like, wow, here's somebody who actually um, will live and dance the, the book, the self-help book, not just, you know, say, well, we tried, we tried, we tried a book and didn't work. So forget about the other nine self-help books or the, or the couples therapist that's going global, you know? Uh, so yeah, it's that, it's that uh, constant process of, we're always, we're always aware of where we're coming from the relationship we came from. Yeah. I mean, uh, for me, it's also about choosing um, and, and being really cautious of the choice. I'm very selective about who I'm going to allow to to tend to the fires in my mind and in my heart and in my soul. And I've been very cautious, perhaps overly selective. I mean, I've been divorced for 10 years and um, this is, you know, the first relationship that is real for me Mm. in those 10 years. And that's, 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 so I'm very selective. Um, And I've been in a deep self inquiry about why I would have chosen what I did choose. Um, and trying to unravel that. Um, and I think also, I also, you know, share what Stephen is talking about. Like we, we both um, are givers um, and we're both aware of, you know, when that kind of borderlines into codependency, you know, to use a jargony word, but, you know, we, and, and we support each other in you know, setting those boundaries um, because it hasn't, it's not, you know, we understand the implications of, of that. And so I think there's a lot of wisdom for me that has emerged out of the failed relationship not too many, but you know, the failed relationships of the past and, and a, a cautious, um, realistic, eyes wide open, you know, progression forward um, in, our, in our attempts to, to get it right or <laughs> to navigate. It, you know, Helene, you, you had said that before you met Steve that you had given up. Yeah, can you talk more about that? Like, you know, what was that period of time for you and what were you actually giving up on? Uh, you know, I, I was giving up on the hope of having partnership. Uh, it's one of it's one of my dreams in my life to um, to to build a life with somebody and to to share life and the moments of life. Um, I have I feel like I have so much to offer, and I want to you know make a difference and and um, and be there for somebody. Like I have this maybe it's a fantasy of sorts, you know. But I really it's really like heart. <laughs> very strong desire like it's also easy for me to be alone I was perfectly happy being on my own but I knew that something was available uh, for me um, and for that other person and so I would um, I just wasn't finding uh, I wasn't finding that I was it was happening for me like uh, I'd met somebody that year and they had changed their job and moved out of the country that actually happened twice and it was the first time in my life that I decided to date, like I'd never dated before. I just kind of went from one, you know, serious relationship to the other and there weren't many, but uh, yeah, it was just bizarre. And I just thought, you know, this isn't going to happen for me. Um, My standards are too high or I'm too unusual or, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not willing to compromise on this, that or the other. And I was just feeling like, yeah, maybe it just wasn't in the cards, so to say. Do you feel that you did compromise to get into a relationship or you just found someone who was a good fit? I think I found someone who was a good fit. Yeah, I really do. And then now there's, and then now that it is such a great fit, I can't believe I compromised on the things previously. <laughs> I was like, wow, you know, how could I even conceive of dating somebody who's never, who doesn't have children? Like, it's like a whole different breed of person. And not to be judgmental, it's just that I am, a, I'm really into parenting. I'm really into being a mom. Uh, my daughter's older, you know, she's 16, but you know, still it's, it's important. We share a lot of conversation about parenting. It's a big part of our relationship. I mean, even though we're not a big part of each other's lives, children's lives yet, um, I think one of the reasons why we take our relationship, I don't want to say seriously, but we're, you know, committed, um, you use different words, but yeah, that we, that, you know, it's, um, it's, a, it's, it's important. This parenting thing is really important. How did you guys navigate the kids? Well, I think we, I mean, we, I mean, Stephen knows my daughter um, and I, I know his son, but I haven't met his daughter yet. Uh, so cautiously, you know, and honestly, mm -hmm. yeah. Did, did you guys have conversations about that you know, oh, early yeah. on about, you know, how you were going to introduce each other to your kids? Yeah, I remember us having conversations. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, it's a, it was a big deal. I remember coming up at one of our, we were in, at a friend's dinner party and he was like, you know, what are you guys going to do? It's like, it's like everything to him. He's like, I mean, you're not going to like, you know, and it was like, wow, I didn't know it was like such a, that, that big of a deal. But uh, I think, um, I think the values, like I feel, we feel really strongly and I feel really strongly that you need to be, you know, her daughter needs a father. And so I felt like that was a responsibility that I, a lot of guys might not want to do, but, you know, I have some friends who actually see that that is, as, as a man is a role that they can do. And it's an opportunity to, to uh, be part of this, the healing of relationships and family, mm -hmm. which is our, there's this worldwide crisis going on. Mm -hmm around not only divorce but also child abuse yes i mean yes. I can't, it's shocking to me that there is so much uh child abuse subtle child abuse going on as we've witnessed witness with covid and to, uh, and speaking of you know post-traumatic stress uh that mm. I, I, I we both shared that right away that was that was very significant that you know that we had a responsibility uh for kids and to help other people our friends even with their kids totally yeah. Um, uh yeah so that was important so funny funny story my daughter actually um uh, you know i of course she found out that i was dating steven and she's like i don't want to meet him for a year i mean she actually set she set the tone <laughs> Good for her. Wow. yeah she's like not interested not making that investment mom and i was like wow Alrighty. <laughs> and I'm fiercely protective of her daughter's boundaries. Yes. Like I actually was like, that's, that's awesome. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'm not going to take that personally. And so, uh, and I, th and I will give her feedback as, so we we're kind of acting as if we were married because, because that's what's the most functional way to hold the space for children because children get ruined by divorce and it's one of these secrets that no one wants to talk about because the whole kids are going to be all right stuff so you know it's a it's a great question you bring up because people do keep it secret and and she gave me the book uh you know the unexpected legacy of divorce hmm. she knew how important it was to, that children are and that was like wow you know you know, I have a, I have a, a partner and, and a lover that like, is like, that's going to be part of our relationship. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's why I think it's great what you guys are doing because yeah. the more relationships you heal, whether they're married or not, the better the kids are going to turn out. And we're living in a society where the kids are going to die sooner from stress-related illnesses yeah. because 
they you know they get damaged you guys know about this more than we do yeah and i think the prioritization of our children is also really important i mean i know for him it's you know when he is when his kids need him i i, I want to support that a thousand percent and not take it personally and uh and i feel really supported in that way as well and steven's like you know your daughter is you know top priority and i really really appreciate that yeah, it's really refreshing to hear you know the leading family structure in the united states is the blended family and there isn't really a template as to how to navigate that correctly, right? And it's, it's you know, parents are kind of going through this on their own and trying to figure it out, you know, without too many role models that are doing it right. You know, we, we actually are a blended family. And so we, we understand the, those struggles, you know, that it's not you know, when you get into a relationship, you're not, you're focused on the relationship, but when you are getting into a relationship with someone that has children, it, there's so much more consideration that has to be, you know, made because you are possibly impacting a, a minor a child, you know, in their experience, their childhood. Yeah. You guys kind of talked about having shared values. What are those values? What's important to you guys? And what, why were you looking for those things in a partner? Uh, health is a big, a big one for me um, and for you. Yeah. So our health um, and when I say health, I mean also, you know, mind, body, spirit. So tending to uh, the health day to day, everything from what we do when we wake up in the morning, you know, with our, you know, lemon water or our green juice, you know, like the simple things that keep our mind clear and our bodies healthy exercise. I mean, these are, there's no discussion around it. It's like, this is what we do. We exercise every day. We love to do it together. Sometimes we don't have time. We have to do it independently, um, depending on the needs or you know injuries or whatever it may be. It's huge for me. You know, we're not debating aspartame. You know, we're not debating. Like we have a lot of. We've spent the majority of our adult lives, you know, immersed in this topic, and so we have a lot of, a lot of um, common knowledge. And uh, we don't need to. Do, you know, I, I trust when he makes dinner. It's going to be exactly what I need, which I can't say really about anybody, including my family. Like they wouldn't know where to start to cook dinner for me. <laughs> but like what you said about the health going into um, not just not just physical, mm -hmm. it's it's a healthy emotional life and healthy spiritual life. Yeah, Stephen and Those I Those are huge values. It um, is because we know I mean, we have a shared value around knowing that relationship is a uh, 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 grounds for learning. And that relationship is, um, we, we come with our stuff, you know, baggage, some say wounds, others say, but we definitely, you know, we come with some stuff and it's from our childhood, it's from our previous relationships kind of doesn't really matter, but I'm going to get triggered and, um, he's going to get triggered and we both look at relationship and I don't want to speak for you, but we both, from what I understand, we both look at relationship for, from the perspective of like, Hey, this is going to happen and we get to own it mm -hmm. and um and try to do our best to support each other in a healthy communication around these emotional um things that are going to come up as a result of the relationship that's huge uh navigating those uh those moments um and then things get tough they get really, really tough sometimes. And because we have shared um, spiritual values, we know that, that you know, there's something greater than us out there. And at some point we just have to kind of be like, I don't know, you don't know, we don't know. Right. <laughs> how, do, how do you guys deal with conflict? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was just saying, uh, and um, uh, I've learned a lot from her about, um, her uh what she how she helps shows up for other people as a coach and as she trains trainers and coaches mm -hmm. on how to launch businesses so it's really been interesting to learn to put into practice some of the stuff that she teaches right on all those different levels can't even follow my own example but um basically um uh there's there's uh most conflicts come up with with talking uh because and which is interesting because we have this common thing around around movement and no talking mm -hmm. so one of the ways we deal with conflict is we've adopted this um 
limit the amount of time you're going to talk about it <laughs> because we both know the research about talking doesn't actually move it through getting it to a different state it stays here yeah so we can go to battle and i'm you know i'm come from theater and film so and an actor so i know a lot about drama oh yeah well you and, can be a litigator i mean he's, i know so good. a lot about psychodrama <laughs> so when i'm not working or saving it for the stage I, <laughs> and my screenplays i can step back as a director and a producer and so that's how one of the ways i deal with it personally so i'm able to go into my you know more masculine kind of linear analytic thing and realize like I'm not going to be able to analyze and fix this. So I got to resolve the, that conflict in myself first, and then I can apply some of the techniques that she teaches other people about how to um, do it with an, an, another person and have a healthier communication relationship. I would say the conflict is something that we're definitely actively engaged in working on because it's just, you know, something that's part of the fabric of the relationship. It comes up. What do you do, especially in like day to day life when you're busy? So one of the things that we've been working on that I really like, actually, it's not always easy, though, is uh, one person, the calm person, the person actually is rational and grounded, which is oftentimes him. <laughs> <laughs> um, is is the one one of us has to be the uh, protector of harmony, because without harmony, the you know the the relationship is is at jeopardy. You know, so so in that commitment around harmony, just being the protector of harmony, there you know either go nonverbal or take a break. Mm. And I find that it's really helpful for me um, to take a break and just kind of regulate myself. Um, sometimes the nonverbal works. Um, but sometimes I'm, I'm just so worked up, it doesn't. So it, it happens like that. Um, the conflict resolution is, is just so interesting because it's such a, it's, there's so much for me to learn inside of that. Like, I, I don't know if you guys uh, talk about, you know, the alpha and the omega or the male, female, masculine, feminine polarities. Mm -hmm. And as um, you know, an entrepreneur, um, you know, as just by the role in my life, I have to carry a lot of masculine energy. And so I said, you know, I, I don't want to keep doing that. Like, I don't, that's not, doesn't really feel resonant. doesn't really resonate with who I actually am. So I said, you know, I really want to attract an alpha male into my life, but I don't think I was really prepared for what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I've been, what you wish for, right? I know. And so, you know, and he is like the quintessential alpha male. He's done so much work on himself. He's so emotionally intelligent and he demands, you know, a, a certain direct um, kind of queen like energy that is uh, decisive and clear. And so I, I really need to look at my avoidant attachment you know, because I've, I've got it, you know, my dramatic exits and, you know, these things that I can look back on and laugh, but in the moment, you know, they're quite real. Um, and also to um, my petty kind of bratty, you know, self that might've been tolerable by somebody of a, a you know, who's not so embodied as an alpha male, um, that doesn't fly. So, you know, he really um, summons me into presence in a way that I don't know that I was fully prepared for, which I think was causing a lot of conflict. And I had to question inside of a self inquiry for myself, like, why is all this conflict here? And is this maybe not meant to be, or, you know, what is it? So I had to really do a deep dive and, uh, and thank you for keep showing up. You know, it, wow. it sounds like you guys are learning how to dance in conflict as well. Yeah. Right. Totally. There's a lot <laughs> of different dances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the multi-dimension of dancing. But dancing really yeah. shifts things. We were dancing this morning and it totally shifted me. Right. So there is, I, I'm a bit of a, you know, neurological drama nut. So, so I know that, that, that taking a walk changes your neurophysiology and your neurobiology. I mean, it literally will rewire your brain. It doesn't take a lot, which is so amazing. And dance is that very simple thing. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not gonna, you know, cause obviously if you're in conflict, no one wants to, not many people want to dance. And I don't want to go up if there's a lot of storm going on or chaos going on. I don't want to go in, I'm gonna go in there and dance so I can fix it. So what I'll do is, is like, either I'm gonna go for a walk or maybe you want to go for a walk. but. I can't control whether you go for a walk or not. So I'm going for a walk. <laughs> 
And even though I'm trying to, because I'm having a hard time staying you know, calm or staying uh, harmonious here, and uh, and I'm not going to fake it. So I got to go walk it, walk it out. And that's really great because. I mean, think about it. Dogs need to be walked when they get anxious and, and nervous. So why aren't we doing that for ourselves? Yeah. Uh, are you saying men are like dogs? So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. Really? I'm, <laughs> saying, I'm saying you have to, men need exercise for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Well, and, you know, what, what you're talking about is an actual, it relates to an actual physiological difference. Yes. You know, that men, we use one hemisphere of the brain at a time. Wow. And so when we are in that place of, you know, intense emotion and anger, you actually have, we have to consciously shift it. And when you are going out for a walk, that's what's happening is being able to, you know, consciously shift the other hemisphere of the brain in, into action. Whereas cool. women use both hemispheres of the brain simultaneously. So that's why women can move through emotion to thought to, you know, being able to monitor the entire environment you know of what's happening and read into inflection and tone and conversation right and that explains why there's this um, emotional storm i can't keep up with it and i'm trying to like put it into a box and then it's like wait a minute you know come on let's fix it in the box and then we'll compartmentalize and we'll go fix this over there and now and she's like to piling on all <laughs> these different the emotions. Wait a minute, let's fix the first box first and then we'll get to the jack in the box you know <laughs> it's like that thank you for explaining that I, I was wondering like you guys must really know like how the how couples work through like all the like the stories right all the stories that we bring from our past and like like, isn't that like this pile of stuff that you bring, this closet full of skeletons? I mean, aren't, aren't, don't you find like, like we're, I think that's what we're doing. Aren't we Absolutely. kind of like working through all these skeletons in our closet? And aren't we, aren't we bringing that into our, each other's lives? And like the other person's like, wait a minute, are we going to do like the skeleton dance now? <laughs> or is that kind of what couples do? Yeah, it's, it's inevitable in every relationship. Oh, that and, makes sense. You know, we, we call these emotional echoes and. You know, these are icebergs, iceberg issues that usually come up in relationships where couples are fighting about something that's happening in the present tense. And that's really only 15% of the story because 85% of the story is coming from history. So wow. couples are not, I mean, the goal in a, in a committed relationship is not necessarily to be happy. It's to learn and grow. And our partner gives us, you know, mirror and the best opportunity to be able to heal these emotional echoes so that we can create a, a synergy. You know, when you think about being in motion, uh, there's always a point where you can pivot because you're moving. Ah. But once you slow down and you come to a place of rest, does it look like it did when you started moving or has it changed? Mm -hmm. And that's what we help couples do is to find how do you, when that stuff comes up, how do you heal it? And most people have no idea how to heal it. And then once they learn how to do that, and it's usually like, I can't deal with you, so I'm not going to, and you can take care of you. And then we teach them how to do that. And it's not as, as scary or as difficult then. And then once something comes up and you heal it in that way, it, it, it comes up and out. And then you get to another layer of something, but it, it's, it's a productive, hmm. not just soothing in the moment or uh, part of a, a, a cycle, but a, a growing and a, a melding together of two people. And you got to get all the rough edges, you know, like, you know, polishing a rock, you start and, <laughs> and yeah. And, and the longer a couple is together and the more they, they do that. And it really, and you guys know this, you've, you've been in previous relationships, it gets to a point where you're either going to grow together or you are going to grow apart. Yeah. And if you don't know how to do that, or, or if one person or both can't do that, it, it's just really painful to be in that. So painful. So are you saying that, like, how do you know when, how to distinguish that when the person, when you're with a couple, that they have this story that is dominating the harmony or the growth 
right? And the other person may have a, their own, another story that's like preventing a certain growth in their another area. How do you separate when it's like, okay, we can do this together, or it's now time for us to address you and your story, and then we'll address mine another time? I mean, do you guys do that? Do you guys? We, we do, but our premise is that each person contributes equally to the condition of the relationship. So, oh. equally. so there may be one person in center spotlight, Okay, but there's someone else on stage as well, right? And that spotlight can shift from one yeah. person to the other. So this is a, a normal part of growth in relationships. And that's what you guys are talking about is is very normal, it's very common. In the beginning of a relationship, it's very easy, right? We, there's not, there's very, li very little investment in the beginning. Hmm. And so you can talk about differing opinions, mm -hmm. but as that level, those levels and stages of vulnerability go deeper and deeper, that's when a lot of these insecurities and past emotional you know, wounds come to the surface. And, and now the couple is tasked with moving through it and healing it together, right? And so it sounds like very much like you guys are, and the thing is uh, that it, it sounds like you guys are insightful about that. You understand that this is something that you guys are going to experience, you know, in your relationship and you both are open to growth, you know, together, mm. which is really yeah. great. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's, the, it's it can be confronting for me, very, very confronting. Mm -hmm. Sure. Especially around trust, you know, when there's been a lot of betrayal. So that is, uh, that's a big one for me. He doesn't deserve my distrust. He hasn't earned any distrust, you know, but I bring that to the table and I'm aware that's like a, an edge for me. He doesn't deserve it, but you will pay the bill for every pain that every man has caused her in her life. Yeah. If you so don't know. 50, 50 things hard, hard for me, but that really, it was helpful what you said about the spotlight. Yeah. Because it's so it because it, it's it's this psychodrama that we're all reenacting until we grow, I guess. And I kind of think of I'm thinking about what you're saying about like growth is kind of like it's also a, a completion, and, and and so it, that story doesn't take over the subplot doesn't take over the love story. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Because I think that's what my that's what I do. I think so. It's really helpful to use that image and to use that of that you are, you know, all the world's a stage mm -hmm. and this co-creation, uh, you know, is a dance that leads to that. The growth is, is what, what do you, how do you, else do you how do you describe growth where you're going to, you're going to change certain patterns. You're going to learn new ways of doing, of coexisting and creating together. Is that what you mean by growth? So if you think about a seed cracking open for uh. us, we experience that as pain and that pain is we carry it in our body. That's why you guys dance. Our, our emotional self, our physical self, and our subconscious self is all of that same place. And the more that seed grows, the less painful it becomes. And, and the, the food and water of that is bonding, nurturing, consistency, safety, all of those things. And, and ultimately a, uh, a witnessing of each other's lives in a, in a safe place to be. And then that's as good as it's ever going to get here on earth because we're none of us are going to survive this place. So there will always be things that are scary and difficult. And to, to really have a consistency of someone you can count on no matter what is really difficult because one of us is leaving first, <laughs> Ooh, for sure. Yeah. Every relationship, someone's, it's going to end, right? And, and that's very painful. And so it's more about that kind of thing. And it's, something it's lifelong. We don't get it in our childhoods and we have to heal that and learn that, you know, in our, in our long-term relationships. Right. What do you always say? Yeah. We get wounded through relationship and we heal mm -hmm. through relationship. Well, that's definitely my experience. I love that. Wow. So last question, what is it that your partner does that, you know, they love you? Oh, Uh, Stephen is so thoughtful, um, and uh, he <laughs> everything from going to the grocery store and buying something that he knows I love to setting a book on the night table that he knows um, I'll want to read. 
uh, to like all these little things uh, I notice everywhere um, uh, that he's so, just so thoughtful. Um, he's always uh, considerate and, and, you know, oh, she, you know, she, she likes this water. So make sure that there's water, you know, and there's just, there's just so many things that he does. Um, I've just, ne I've never ever experienced that level of thoughtfulness and care and consideration uh, before. It's one of many things, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. Really? That's it? <laughs> The little things? What about the big things? God, I'm a drama, I'm a dramatist. I want to hear I want to hear something big, juicy. Uh so uh I'll go, I'll go big. Um she's she's uh shows her love by wanting to you know go really deep. Like that's, 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 that's the intimacy is like scary, you know, and, uh, and, um, and it's, uh, it brings up, brings up those wounds because you do feel safe and you feel like you're like, wow, where's this going? Where's this going to go? I'm used to being the leader as the guy. And so to really like, <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm feeling vulnerable, like talking about it because it's like the, 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 your, your love is like, it's big and it's like, it's like, uh, a very wide and expansive and uh, intense. There's an intensity there. And I, I'd prefer to be intense about my sports or, <laughs> but uh, this emotional, you know, going to the gym of, uh, if you will, or the running the race of intimacy is, uh, is a whole nother, it's a whole nother triathlon <laughs> of doing different. Uh, uh, so feeling that you're, you know, that's the race, you know, you want to, you want to run is, uh, is uh, pretty profound. And that's very wonderful. Yeah. That's very wonderful. Uh, Helene, if, if someone wanted to find out about more about your mom coaching, you know, where would they go? Uh, Jennifer-Helene.com. Uh, that's our website. There's going to be um, in the next few weeks, um, it'll be this program, this year long program that I'm launching um, is going to be more information about that. And you know, the health of our bodies and minds and spirits are, is so important. The demands on women today are uh, enormous. It was just a generation or two ago that it was even taboo for our mothers and grandmothers to work. And so with these demands on us, um, they're being pulled in a lot of different directions. And um, how do we uh, be the great parent that we want to be and be the wonderful wife that we want to be and, uh, and, and also run our businesses? It's, um, it's a balance, it's a balancing act. And there is a way to navigate it that is graceful and easeful, but doesn't need to result in disease, poor parenting and divorce. Um, and I'm, I'm really committed to supporting uh, those moms. Awesome. And I know it works, yeah, it's exciting. And we'll put the, uh, the link in the show notes too as well. Thank you. Stephen and Lee, thank you so much for being on our podcast today. You guys are awesome. Yeah. I mean, just, just, I'm just so, excited that there's people out there that not only are modeling good relationship and communication and, and uh, but available to, uh, to, to spread the good word that there's hope for, for there's hope for relationships. Uh, yeah. Good work. You sharing stories is a way that human beings have been, you know, bonding, healing, growing since the beginning of time. And we hope that by you guys sharing your story, it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. Oh, super. Keep up the good work. We want to wholeheartedly thank you for joining us today and for listening to Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love.
You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez.